Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Francesca Amonte. And she is a CEO, she's a speaker, author, coach. And um, I'm really happy to have her on the show to talk about her work and to uh, inspire the audience. Um, and uh, so, Francesca, welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Lou, for having me. Honored to be a guest on your incredible show. Yeah. So, uh, we're very informal, so just everybody calls me Chris. And uh, no um, wonder. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, talk about your background, your journey, um, how you got started, and um, how the audience can benefit from your your ex- expertise. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to the show. And uh, like I said, uh, briefly talk about yourself, your background, and how you can help the audience. Thank you, Chris. So for a bit about my background, um, today I am a a podcast host, I'm a resilience coach, I'm a public speaker, I was in commercial and residential real estate development for several years and then fully stepped into the public speaking and and coaching realm. Um, A little bit about, you know, my resilience coaching now today, dating back, my journey kind of coming into this earth, my parents lost my brother at a young age, about 16 in a tragic car accident. And they ended up having me about five years later, they named me in in his stead. So his name was Francesco, and my name's Francesca. And a little bit about that journey. um, You know, I did a lot in the figure skating, competitive dance, swimming, piano, the whole nine yards in that competitive uh, athletic background. And there was definitely an aspect in my in my lifespan of really trying to do what I could in terms of filling my brother's void and really bringing that light and love back into my parents' life. And in the midst of all of this, I really got to identify and see from a very unique lens what grief and loss does to a family. And even at the age of like four and five, I remember really just observing my folks in terms of how they behaved, how they acted, you know, how they dealt with certain things, how they problem solved in the midst of that really heavy grief. Um, because that was definitely prominent in our home for many years. And so as I started, you know, cultivating different skills, whether it be, you know, um, competing in all these different sports, I definitely saw my behavioral pattern personally, really trying to be that overachiever, overachiever to try to um, make sure that I was worthy enough to be in that family. And, you know, especially being born after a loss, it was definitely a weird feeling as a child being like, what can I do to possibly live up to this incredible human that everybody loved? How could I possibly be enough to be in this family and to fill his void? And anyways, throughout that journey, what that ended up really teaching me was a lot of determination and resilience, which kind of brings me to the coaching I do today. Um, whether people are going through, you know, as CEOs, hardships in their businesses or whether it's grief or loss or divorce or any type of, you know, life throws us curveballs at certain times. But of course, the biggest thing for me was really identifying what is it that we can do um, from a behavioral standpoint where we can choose a better pathway forward and recognize that there's definitely, um, how would I best describe this, uh, Chris? I guess for me throughout my journey, and this is me synopsizing so many things that I typically speak on stage a lot more in detail, but um, Definitely being born after a loss, I learned very, very quickly um, to just cherish every moment. And so uh, that that brought me to really fast tracking my life's experiences. You know, I, I graduated six months early at the age of 16. I dove right into being an entrepreneur. I was flying here, there and everywhere, coaching and training large groups of people. And in the midst of that and me observing how people behaved and how um, others interacted with each other, I really got this passion and this fire within me that I wanted to help other people, uh, especially ones that have been through tragic losses or perhaps are trying to find themselves again in the midst of, you know, certain aspects of their lives. I really wanted to help them through that. So that's kind of where after doing um, competitive, sorry, um, residential and commercial real estate development for several years, about a decade, I stepped fully at the age of 30 into being a full-time public speaker and full-time resilience coach. And it's been probably one of the most rewarding things that I've done. And uh, it's just so wonderful to, you know, speak on different stages, meet new people such as yourself, uh, Chris. It's it's incredible being on all these different podcasts and being able to just bring something unique to their audience and perhaps give them a different perspective or a different lens to look out of. Yeah, that's a really uh, fantastic and inspiring journey. So, you know, we'll kind of uh, dive into the conversation. So first thing is, um, you know, obviously you're very accomplished and um you know, you value uh, achievement and certainty. 
Um, so talk about, um, so one thing is talking about is, um, you know, I've noticed a lot in um, high achievers, uh, there's this idea of perfectionism. So how do you, how do you um, address this, like never, this feeling of never being good enough, you have to always go the next milestone, on and on and on. How do you know when you're enough? Absolutely. You know, I would say, Chris, last year at the age of 29, I had, you know, I would say 15 or 16 massive goals, both financially and just on the entrepreneurial standpoint that I wanted to achieve and, and some personal goals as well. Um, and I remember at the end of the year, I ticked off every single box, got them all completed. And I remember thinking to myself, what did that actually gain me? Don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful for all of the goals being achieved and fi financial goals being achieved. It was a really wonderful, fulfilling feeling at the end of the day, but it was such a wonderful reminder that we never really arrive at our destination. The, the journey is the destination. There's, you know, you get there and you check off the 15 boxes and all these goals and you go, but what have I learned about myself? And that, just because I achieved all of these goals at before I turned 30, did that really amount to anything? Did it really uh, acquaint to me being, um, you know, being exactly the feelings of worthiness or even just as a recovering perfectionist, understanding the fact that, you know, there's never really going to be a level of perfection. Of course, there is by certain uh, scientific measures, of course, but when all push comes to shove, we're always constantly learning and evolving. And so, you know, that uh, 12 month process at the age of 29 taught me a lot and coming into my year of 30 now, um, one of the, the greatest joys and then the greatest lessons that I've been able to um, experience and what I want to share with your audience. If there's recovering perfectionists out there or a CEO that wants to do it right before they want to start, we're, we're never really going to be there. I think that we're, because we're constantly always evolving and changing and growing, especially if we have high performing teams that we're wanting to challenge and make better and, and want them to be their best selves for the team and for their own, you know, personal reasons, you know, I, at least for me personally, what I had to really understand is if I want to start something, I just have to start. I'm not going to have the perfect equipment or it's not going to be the perfect time or the perfect circumstances. Um, similar to you, Dr. Liu, um, sorry, Chris, <laughs> one of the things that you know I wanted to do in 2021 was start a podcast. And I could have given myself 30 million reasons as to why it wasn't the right timing. I didn't have the professional recording studio at the time or all of the fancy equipment. I didn't have the videographer set up and all these different things. And I think one of the brain hacks that we do is just, you know, really saying in that moment, I just need to start. And so that's what I started to do. I just literally the next day I got everything set up and no, I didn't have all the perfect equipment over time. Of course we gain that we get the studio, we get the recording equipment, um, but we just need to start somewhere. And then over time where we look back and we go, Oh my gosh, had I not started, I wouldn't have impacted these, this amount of people. I wouldn't have been able to bring this message to whoever needed to hear it. Um, so in my business life as a CEO, as I, you know, started to look at growing my team and becoming that coach and speaker, you know, same thing. I could have given myself so many reasons why it just wasn't the perfect timing to start. And a small example of this that turned into something really beautiful was I wanted to do these large speaking events where I would get all these incredible, whether it be TEDx speakers from Canada and the United States or just different respected speakers, CEOs, and, and bring them to stage and bring the audience something really impactful to hear. There was a part of me that thought, well, I don't have this. I don't, you know, there were so many aspects that derailed my thinking but again it's just stopping ourselves taking a moment to pause and going i just need to start and same thing i started that i've done now six major uh amante speaking events i do these smaller and more intimate style groups where we do the speakers and but there's maybe a smaller audience instead of you know 100 or 200 there's maybe 50 in the audience and these just started to grow but had i not just stopped pause and said i can do this you know i just have to start somewhere that's really what it all comes down to and i'm sure for you chris i mean your podcast you have so many countless episodes it's very well respected everyone comes to you as uh, an expert in your field but there was a certain point where you had to say you know what i'm going to do my first pilot episode what a great feeling but i'm sure like many of us, there's that weird feeling at the time where we go, oh my gosh, like, should I start now? So that's my greatest advice. If you are a perfectionist out there or, you know, a CEO, an entrepreneur, you know, it's never going to be the perfect time. And yes, sure, there's going to be better circumstances down the road. I have no doubt, but starting can really create some incredible ripple effects. And yes, we don't have to see this whole staircase, but as that quote we've heard many times, you just need to take one step. Yeah, I love that. And um, it's just, uh, it's progress over perfection and it's more 100%. important to get the 
uh, it's more important to get it out there as opposed to um, kind of getting in this limbo um, and just uh, iterating, just like a startup. Um, the other problem or issue, I'm not sure if you um, have this, is <clears throat> when uh, very high achievers, and um, usually it's come from this um, this uh, place of they need certainty or they need recognition because uh, you know because of some event and how do you how do you get them to be vulnerable because um, a lot of them you know have their guards up they're um you know they have this kind of this front that they have to be perfect and have everything together how do you get them to drop those guards and be themselves when they want to get up in front of the, the uh, stage that's a very good question chris um in my coaching group one of the things that whether it's business leaders that I'm coaching, CEOs, or just entrepreneurs in general, you know, one of the things that I always focus on is the five daily non-negotiables. And one of those daily non-negotiables that I get them to do, in addition to, I'll give you an example of some, but, you know, making sure that you're hydrated, you're getting your movement, um, you know, you're reading 10 pages of a self-development book, listening to a podcast, just making sure that you're continuing that education, and flourishing ourselves, all of that, um, you know, focusing on your goals. But one of the non-negotiables that I have for them is to do something what I that I call mirror work. And it's I know it may sound silly and the concept did sound silly to me when my business coach brought this to me years ago. Uh, but it was one of the most profound shifts in my life and a catalyst for change. And it was this. So doing mirror work is something as simple as say if I've just done a big event and yes, it's so easy for us to look for those accolades, look for that validation and looking for other people to validate the things that we've done so we know that we're good enough or we did a good job. But at the end of the day, the old, no, people could tell us that till we're, you know, blue in the face. They could tell us for years. But if we don't personally believe it, we're not going to actually, we're not going to feel fulfilled, right? And we're always going to be looking for that false sense of validation from other people. And that's kind of the trap that a lot of people are in via social media because it's such a world of comparison these days. We we look for how many likes and comments and, and views that we get to kind of amount to, okay, yes, that must have been a good act or a good event that I did. And so one of the things I get my coaching group to do, as I said, every single day, whether you're brushing your teeth, I'm all about habit stacking. So if you're brushing your teeth, if you can habit stack that with taking your vitamins, the third thing that you can do is look at yourself in the mirror and say whatever affirmation, whether it's I'm proud of you, um, I'm like, or, and just, I know it sounds so silly, but just saying to yourself in the mirror, I'm proud of the hard work that you've executed this week, or I'm proud of you for overcoming that, that difficulty, or I'm proud of you for overcoming that challenge. We need to be proud of our own selves. And, you know, I just put on a, a large uh, speaking event. It was just in June, actually, in Kelowna in Canada before flying out to the States. And yes, it was so wonderful to hear from the audience members or the speakers that they enjoyed the event and that it was impactful. Absolutely. That's the whole reason I'm there is to make sure that at least one person in that audience took something powerful away from it. But when I came home that night, I still, when I was brushing my teeth at the end of the night, I took a couple of minutes just to do that mirror work and say, you know what, Francesca, I'm really proud of all the hard work that you you put into this and doing something good for the community. That was it. It only takes a couple seconds. But if I'm not giving that to myself and feeding that to myself first, the rest of it really isn't going to isn't going to sink in. And we're constantly going to be looking for, I think, validation, perhaps in the wrong places, because we're not <laughs> satisfied and fulfilled ourselves. I don't know if that is kind of answers your question, Chris, but that would be my take on that. Yeah, it's um, it's really interesting because um, when I, I was also a competitive athlete um, in my earlier days, and you know I, what's interesting is uh, a lot of my mentors they said um, you know this isn't life or death you know like you know of course like it has like it can has a lot of ramifications if you do well but it's like it's not life or death where it's like if you don't succeed it's not going to be like you're but um, it's really interesting to put that into perspective and you want to prove it to yourself but it's not like something where it's just like you know like yeah and I didn't know you're an athlete that's amazing and I'm sure yeah. that you felt that a lot I felt that pressure for my coaches too that they wanted me to do incredible they wanted me to win but at the end of the day they still reminded me that it's not going to make or break my life success if I didn't win that gold medal that one time right um yeah. one of the things that you said Chris that I I don't think I touched on so I, I'll make sure to do so you said how can I how do I help other people to get up on stage and be vulnerable and mm -hmm. 
one of the ways that I do that, just to ensure that answer, that question is answered, is I always remind others that we are never going to be fully relatable unless we are living in our authenticity. It's really easy to get up on stage and talk about how perfect we are and, oh, yes, this is what I've researched and this and that. And don't get me wrong, people are going to say, wow, that was a very, you know, professionally and articulated uh, speech, for sure. But the times that I have gone up on stage and I've been that very well-spoken, articulated person, yes, I've gotten great feedback. But the times that I stand up on stage and I am fully just saying, you know, exactly whether it was a hardship that I overcame or just being truly vulnerable, it's incredible the impact and the, and the feedback <laughs> that comes from that because there's just, I, I'm pretty sure there's a scientific study that says that, and maybe you can share with me if you know the stat, but that authenticity almost vibrates about 4,000 times stronger or more powerful than that of love. Like authenticity is so powerful. It can be felt. You, you just know it when you, when someone enters the room and they're being truly authentic. And so I just remind my entrepreneurs and my CEOs that whether it's your team that you're building, whether it's the people that you're speaking to while you're on stage, whether you're doing a conference, a seminar or a podcast, wherever you're showing up to let your walls drop and just be you. And that's a really easy task to say like verbally, um, but really sinking into that really, it, it, it comes down to us being okay to be seen. And I think that in the world that we live in, I think a lot of people would argue, well, a lot of people are seen, you know, we post everything that we do on social media, but we can also argue that whether we are CEOs or entrepreneurs or just regular people doing their, living their incredible life, we often post the highlight reels and more of us need to know what people are actually struggling with, especially as leaders. I think that in organizations, it's so easy for us to look at the outside looking in and and go, oh my gosh, that leader just does it so effortlessly. Like they never come up, there's never challenges for, for him or for her, whoever it is. And I think that the more that people, whether it's Gary V or Ed Milet or any of those leaders out in the world, the way that they do, they're very vulnerable. They're very authentic. They say, hey, look, this is a, something that I just dealt with last week. This is how my team overcame it. I find it so inspiring because that's what I relate to. It, it's real, right? So that would be my answer to that question, Chris, is I just really encourage them. You, The more that you're able to drop that guard, the more that you're going to have this really powerful group of people that want to follow you, want to be inspired by you. Um, similar to your podcast, Chris. I mean, the people, yeah. the people, so many people follow your podcast is that you don't have a pretentiousness about you. You're very knowledgeable and you're very, uh, you're very experienced, but you're very, you're very humble and kind. And there's just an authenticity that's felt when we're sitting on the other side of the camera. And I think that just can't be bought. I love that. And so um, I love, uh, you know, I could, you're obviously very accomplished and, um, you know, we should have you on for a part two or a webinar and talk about how people can uh, contact you and um, reach out to you for, events if you, or uh, coaching or consulting or follow your socials. Absolutely, Chris. Um, so for anybody that would, yeah, I would love to connect with your audience. My Instagram is a really great place that I'm very active on. So it's uh, F-R-E-S-C-A. I kind of abbreviated my first name to Fresca on there. So Fresca Amante. So F-R-E-S-C-A Amante is my Instagram. When you see my bio on my Instagram page, there's a direct link to the children's book I wrote called After Loss Came You. There's a direct link on there to my um elite academy page so my coaching page there's a direct link on there to all of my events so my amante talks events it's a really easy way to get in touch with me but at the same time my full name is francesca amante you can find me on um, linkedin you can find me on facebook um, and i would absolutely be honored to connect uh, with any of you in the audience and, and chris i'm just so grateful for what you do here thank you for the show that you put out for so many to benefit from and i feel very very honored to be on here today awesome and for all the audience, let's thank uh, Francesca for coming on and um, talking about her inspiring work and journey. And be sure to give her socials a like and follow. And um, with that, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Chris. I hope you have a wonderful day.